Hello, I'm Deborah Kears. And up until a few weeks ago, right here in my Virginia studio is where I had hanging the work that is now at the Customs House Museum in Clarksville, Tennessee. I'm so excited about this show. It's titled Merica, and it's a miniature art representation of different places that I've been across the USA. I thought with this show beginning in, in July, it was appropriate to lean toward an American theme. And I'm so thrilled with it. I hope you get a chance to see it. I created the work that's in this show under a magnifier. And that's because everything in it is about the size of the palm of your hand. And I have some questions about painting in miniature that I was asked to answer, and I'm delighted to share with you. First is, what drew you to paint miniatures? Well, that's an easy answer. It was the people. I got involved with miniature art back in, I guess it was the 90s, early 90s, and I just loved the different shows that were across not only the country, but the world. And there are a number of them in the United States, hundreds of them actually, that happen every year or every other year. And when you go to these shows, you start to see the same groups of people, the same artists, and they became friends. And so I was hooked because I was assimilated into these groups. And it's just been such a fun adventure um, ever since. What would people be surprised to know about painting on such a small scale? Well, there's a couple things. First off, people are always surprised to hear that it actually takes longer to paint in miniature than it does to paint things that are larger, small format like I have behind me here, or even some of the larger pieces hanging on the wall back there. And that's because if you think about it, in a miniature painting, everything is in the size of your palm. In a larger painting, like go to a museum, take a look at what you can focus on. Your brain, the way it works, you can only focus at any given time on an area that's about the size of your hand. Everything else is in your periphery. So that means when you paint in miniature, you have to have more information in order to please the brain in every part of the painting. It's not like you're using fewer brush strokes. In fact, you're using more um, a lot of times when you paint littler because you still have to transfer that same information but in a smaller space. So you're doing it under a magnifier. It's a lot more work working under a magnifier. In fact, the first year I lost two lines in my vision charts and I didn't realize why. It's because every 20 minutes you have to look and focus on the horizon, otherwise you risk eye strain. So those are some things that people find kind of interesting about miniature art, but we keep doing it because we're so passionate about it. What size brushes do you use in painting miniatures is another question I get often. And the truth of it is, they're the same size brushes that I use to paint my other pieces, small format or larger. Now, having said that, when I work in miniature, I really, really need a very pointy tip. So I can have a size six or seven or whatever brush as long as it's, a, if it's a fat brush, as long as the paint is free flowing, so it's a thinner paint that I use, and as long as that point is very um, pointy, I can get a very precise mark and lay it down, lay the paint down precisely where I want it to go. That's what I'm after. Having said that, by the time I get to my final layers in my miniature works, I'm really not using a brush at all. What I do is I use sculptor's tools to literally sculpt the paint into the little teeny shapes and textures that I want it to be. I want it to dance when you hold it up close. I want it to dance as you hold it in your hand and turn it and the light captures things in different ways. Or I want it to be smooth like a photograph and all of these kinds of effects I can get much easier and much more precisely using sculptor's tools than I can with brushes. Another question, what artists inspire me the most? Well, when I go to a museum, I'm always drawn toward the 17th century art. I love, love, love the Golden Age artists. Vermeer, Rembrandt, Franz Hals, Peter Klaus. These guys did art that was everyday scenes, and yet you sit there and you contemplate and you tell stories. There's a lot of symbolism in the still lifes, for example. You can think about this art and you get absorbed into it. And what I really love is a lot of times you just experience it so you can feel that vibrancy of, of the bright yellow in the lemon and you can just taste and um, you're, see I'm getting all tripped up on my words because I'm so excited even talking about it, but when art pulls you in and it engages all of your senses, that's what I'm going for and that's what I like to experience as a viewer as well. So 
I would have to say that I do a lot of traveling, but one place that I would like to visit at some point in my life is the Netherlands, because I would love to stand in Rembrandt's studio. That's where a lot of classical realism really began or got a foothold, right? I, I would love to go and visit um, the Vermeer house and see the girl with the pearl earring. I've painted my spin on that painting several times now. I'd love to see it in person. So if that's in the cards, it's gonna happen someday. I'm gonna go there, but it hasn't happened yet. I hope that you enjoy my show at the Customs House Museum, Merica, and I do hope that I get to meet you at my reception on September 3rd from five to eight. I'll be there doing a painting demonstration, and depending on social distancing with the pandemic, we're hoping to um, be able to have people either take a turn at painting on paintings that I've started or um, begin their own paintings. So we'll see how that all plays out. But either way, thank you for being with me on this art journey. And I hope that you love miniature art as much as I do after you experience it.